full moon rises over Transylvania with subspecies. The latest horror offering from Full Moon Entertainment. Director Ted Nicolau bravely pioneers the first American film to be shot in the post ceausescu Romania. Well, when Charlie first um, proposed doing this film in Romania, I was a little bit suspicious of the whole setup, but they sent me over there for a four-day kind of location scout. And uh, meeting the people that I'd be working with, Vlad and Juana and uh, Lucian, the art director, and seeing the locations that we would have access to, the, um, the ruins in Transylvania and um, it's a beautiful, magical forest that uh, we could have free reign in shooting at. It suddenly seemed to me like the chance of a lifetime, really, to shoot at a place where um, you just had total access to these ancient places. This is one of the many strange and incredible locations we found here in Romania, a church that was built in the 1870s. And uh, the bell fell off from the roof here and went through the floor. And over here, one of the graves actually cracked open. You can see the hand of somebody down there. It was sort of like a good nightmare, let's say. It was a nightmare while we were there. The uh, production problems and the differences in cultures between the Americans and the Romanians and uh, sort of the leftover psychology of communism that, uh, that still exists in that country made it a very trying experience for all of us. What? You speak English? Joanne. <laughs> Along with Mr. Nicolau came the American cast. Michael Watson of General Hospital. Laura Tate. Michelle McBride. Angus Scrim of Phantasm. Why have you come? And playing the most terrifying vampire this side of Nosferatu. Danish actor Anna Hoban. The American troop landed in the midst of more troubled times for Romania. The hotel we were staying at in the heart of Bucharest was along the thoroughfare where the original revolution took place. And everywhere you looked, there were bullet holes in the buildings. That sort of gave you a sense of how violent the revolution really was and how many people died in that revolution. And uh, we were in the hotel one day and we heard this incredible commotion and looked out our windows and there was a river of people coming down the street in protest of the, uh, the price rises in the government. My father told me that uh, in the very beginning, in 90 and 10, 90 and 20, Bucharest was a very beautiful city. It was named the small Paris because it, it had a very specific kind of architecture. It was very warm. And it was really, really very sad that we, we couldn't keep all this Bucharest for us because it was properly destroyed. Stay away from the ruins. Stay away. You might do interfere with the way things are. My name is uh, Sandra Bishan. I'm a television reporter. You asked me to tell you some uh, things about uh, the situation of the Romanian uh, film right now. It's a very difficult situation because the whole system has collapsed and uh, things have to be reorganized and uh, things go very slowly. Slower production pace notwithstanding, Director Nicolau jumps into Romanian culture and folklore with the help of costume designer Juana Tofan. This is a sequence when we uh, needed a festival, a popular festival, so I make sketches with those masks and I find a wonderful man uh, who is make up at a theatre who uh, made those. This is my favourite mask and uh, I like it very much because it's very expressive and I found it the best from all. But it depends on taste. It uh, represents a central character of a gypsy, and uh, the story of the festival is around this character. We 
kind of mixed a few metaphors. Uh, one, uh, a mask festival that occurs in northern Romania um, in, in the winter that is like a dance with, with masks. We took that uh, mask dance and kind of combined it with this festival of, you know, unearthing the grave of the undead and came up with this uh, festival that we put into the film, you know, which I think is one of the centerpieces of the film. The smallest stars of the film, the subspecies, proved to be the biggest problems for production. We shot some subspecies, men in rubber suits, in Romania. They built these incredible overscale sets, and we shot these um, subspecies there. But due to some problems with, uh, with the costumes and with the um, stuntmen that we got in Romania who were like over eager in their performances, we decided when we got the material here that we really needed to make these subspecies more magical. And so we enlisted the aid of David Allen. What Charlie explained to me was that he had, an, he had some monsters that he felt were not quite adequate to the picture. So then it remained to me to go through the material and the editors and try to find moments before the costumes ran in or after they ran out of the backgrounds that we could isolate optically to create background plates for the new creatures to operate in in a matted in uh, situation. The stop motion animation puppets and the rod puppets are both composed of natural foam rubber and have similar skeletal systems. The only difference being that the skeletal structure of the stop motion puppet has tension in the joints, while the rod puppet is loose and flexible. The rod puppetry gives us a certain amount of freedom and speed uh, because uh, basically we need it, we're generating this stuff real time. And uh, with the animation, it's a little more time consuming. Well, most of the challenges I'm doing in this kind of rod puppetry work is just basically to make them look convincing on film and uh, to make them look interesting and basically behaving like real little creatures. Most would think that shooting a vampire film in Romania is like bringing sand to the beach. Hi. We set our men on the street to ask the average Romanian what they thought of vampires. Nobody uh, believe in it, in, uh, in vampires, because uh, there aren't. The people in Romania never think that there are vampires on this world, never. Only America thinks that in Romania exist vampires. Here, we doesn't see them. They doesn't exist. We never saw him. In our history, you don't know about. Uh, we don't think that uh, your uh, books which uh, speak about uh, Dracula, they are real. Because uh, for us, for Romania, Dracula was a very great uh, king. A very great king. Vampire? What is this? Dracula story is a story invented by a stupid American for children, not for, for grown-ups, and is not light to the history of our um, country and of our people. It's a stupid story. It's not for uh, intelligent people. <laughs> In the vampires of communism, maybe. And as much of a nightmare as a lot of our production was, and as incredibly difficult as it was for us as Americans coming into a situation where there was so, where there were so little resources to work with and trying to make a film that, that involved a lot of special effects and a lot of, um, a lot of mechanical effects in a place where they don't really understand mechanical effects as we know it. Uh, as difficult as all that was, when I think back on it now, all I remember are the people I was working with and the love that we shared, you know, and the, and the incredible uh, battle, battlefield mentality that we had as we were trying to struggle against the production. Uh, it, you know, I sort of miss it in a way. Yeah.